Hello my bookworms, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sydney and today's video we will be doing some five star predictions and also going over how it went the last time we tried to do this. <laughs> So hey, what's up, how are ya? I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for being here and hanging out with me for a little bit. The angle is a little bit different today because I left my tripod at our new house. And so you're sitting on a very stall, stall, a very tall stack of books. I hope you're comfy because we are getting right on into this video. And the first thing I wanna talk about is how it went last time. I have all the books sitting right over here that I said they were gonna be five stars. Like I didn't have many doubts in my mind that these books were going to be nothing but fabulous. And um, I think it could have gone worse, but actually it's it really didn't go that well. <laughs> um, the first one that I said was going to be five stars was actually a, a pretty a pretty swift DNF actually. Um, one of them was A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. Um, I DNF'd this book I think on around page 30 or maybe 50 and it's a damn shame because I think that the premise of this series and this book sounds really, really cool, but I just had a lot of trouble caring and paying attention. I don't know what it was. My brain just like shut off every time I sat down to try and read this. I found it very difficult to follow. I mean, I just, I just, I just couldn't care and I'm sorry, but I DNF'd it. So therefore I am zero for eight right now. The next one, though, let's just switch gears. Um, it was Beat Read by Emily Henry. I was a thousand percent correct about this book. I gave this five stars. I would give this more if I could. I absolutely adore this book. This was the perfect romance, in my opinion, because it wasn't only about the romance and the main character's relationship, but it was also kind of like messy and about each character's like struggles and personal lives and things that they were struggling with leading up into their relationship together. There was a lot of growth and it was just perfect. So I gave this five stars. The next one was Clap When You Lion by Elizabeth Acevedo. I did give this five stars. Absolutely phenomenal. I kind of knew that I was going to give this five stars just because I read The Poet X, which was also great, and it was just had this five star feeling about it. And as soon as I started reading it, I think I started crying on page one. Like, not like crying tears, but like I teared up on page one and I was like, okay, yeah, I was right. <laughs> okay, but the next one. <laughs> Um, mm, was Ruthie Fear by Maxim Loskutov. Um, this one, I still, I adore this cover. I think it's absolutely stunning, but this one was also a DNF for me, actually. <laughs> so the general vibe that I'm getting so far of going through these books are, it was either all or nothing. I either loved it or I hated it so much that I didn't even want to continue. <laughs> and that was the case with this one as well. This book has no plot. <laughs> and it's not like Catherine House where like I loved that in Catherine House, how it was a little bit chaotic and messy, but this one literally there was no rhyme or reason to anything that was happening. I only know the main character's name because it is in the title. Otherwise, I couldn't tell you a single thing about this book. And I made it more than halfway and I just couldn't do it. I was struggling with the word choices that our writer was using and just there was, again, no plot and it wasn't intriguing. It wasn't like weird no plot. It was just nothing. It was nothing. <laughs> and so I DNF'd it. I couldn't do it. I'm more upset than you, I promise. The next one was King of Scars by Leigh Bardugo. Um, I genuinely don't know what I gave this. I know it wasn't five stars. I think it was like a four or a four and a half stars out of five. So like I was close, but close only counts in horseshoes, am I right? I'm actually 80 years old for using that phrase. Anyways, I think that this book was good. I enjoyed it. You know, I love the Grisha verse, but there was just some disconnects with me and the actual plot at hand and what was going on. I just felt like the uh, viewpoints between the characters that we were following, they could have switched a little bit more often in order to keep me a little bit more engaged and a little bit more on top of what was happening in all parts of the story. But ultimately, like the ending of the story, like everything that happened that led up to the last like 100 pages made it really worth it. Like it was still really good. I love these characters. I love this world. So maybe some of it is a little bit of nostalgia for me. All in all, I liked it. I gave it a four or a four and a half. But it wasn't a five star read for me. And kind of same with the next one. So the next one was Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi. Adiemi. This is the sequel to Children of Blood and Bone, which I did give five stars. 
absolutely fantastic. I would recommend that book to everyone. And then this was the sequel. It was still good, but it's very short compared to Children of Blood and Bone. And I think that it was a little bit of a cop out because it just, <sighs> It felt rushed. It felt like it could have been a five stars if Tomi Adeyemi kind of like slowed down and did exactly what she did a little bit more in Children of Blood and Bone. In a sense of just like taking more time to describe like the scenery or be a little bit more flowery like I felt the other book was. But this book, it just, it just felt rushed to me. So I gave it a four out of five. And then the last two. The last two, mm. Some of my favorite books of all time now. The first one was The Death of Vivek OG by Akwike Mezi. This book made me cry. It is absolutely phenomenal. Five out of five all the way. And if you haven't read it by now, you absolutely should. And then uh, Priory of the Orange Tree. I read, look at all those tabs. Can we just appreciate it for a second? Loved it. Five out of five, fantastic. I wish that it had a sequel or anything else so that I could be in this world again and with these dragons and with these characters. I loved it. And okay, so that being said, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Out of those eight books, I gave four of them five stars, two DNFs, and then two four star reads. So <sighs> I can't even like, say that I was half correct by giving half of them five stars because there was two DNFs on that list. So let's just hope that this next round goes a little bit better. <laughs> and that being said, I have some books in front of me that I'm so anxious about. I just started sweating <laughs> that I'm really hoping are gonna be five stars. <laughs> I just made some last minute decisions. I <laughs> took a couple off and put a couple new ones on this list and now I hope I made the right decision. <laughs> Uh-oh, I really hope I don't regret this. <laughs> okay, uh, the first one that I'll start with that I think is going to be five stars is Ah, ah, oh god, is Yoke by Mary H.K. Choi. I will always love this book. The way that the hands meet on the spine is just absolutely stunning. I'm obsessed with it. And this book just genuinely feels like something that I could really fall in love with. I don't know what's happening with my hair, but I am not here for it today. I don't know what's happening. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Um, this is what you get and you don't throw a fit. Yoke by Mary H.K. Choi. Ready? In the story, we have our main characters, Jane and June. Once thick as thieves, these sisters who moved from Seoul to San Antonio and finally New York don't want anything to do with each other until June gets cancer and Jane becomes the only one who can help her. Flung together by sickness and bound by family secrets, will these sisters learn more about themselves and each other than they're willing to confront? This book is just absolutely stunning. I just can't get over it. I've been eyeing it since it's been on my shelf. And I genuinely do think that I'm going to love this story. The next one. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I so nervous? The next one is A History of Wild Places by Shay Earnshaw. I just think that this book is absolutely stunning and it has to do with like a cult and I find cults so interesting. I think that the vibes and the atmosphere around cults are just eerie. As long as it's done well, I live for those atmospheric kind of creepy eerie reads. So five stars, hopefully. In this one, our main character is Travis Wren and he has an unusual talent for locating missing people. He was hired by a family as a last resort. He requires only a single object to find the person who has vanished. When he takes the, on the case of Maggie St. James, a well-known author of dark, macabre children's books, he is led to a place many believed to only be a legend. Known as Pastoral, this reclusive community was founded by like-minded people searching for a simpler way of life. But soon after Travis Travis. <laughs> but soon after Travis stumbles upon it, he disappears, just like Maggie St. James. Years later, Theo, a lifelong member of Pastoral, discovers Travis's abandoned truck beyond the border of the community. No one is allowed in or out, not without the risk of bringing a disease, the rot, into Pastoral. Unraveling the mystery of what happened reveals secrets that Theo, his wife, Calla, and her sister, B keep from one another. Secrets that prove their perfect isolated world isn't as safe as they believed, and that darkness takes many forms. I love it. I will be, I'll be, unless it's written terribly, I'll be surprised if this isn't five stars. I really will be. Um, mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, the next one. I'm like second guessing my whole life already. <laughs> Am I going to regret all of this? I don't know, but we're going to keep going. The next one that I think could potentially hopefully be five stars is Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. 
a lot of people love this, a lot of people hate it. It's kind of a controversial uh, choice, I suppose. But I'm gonna take a gamble on it because I think that it has potential to be five stars for me. <laughs> I said that like really unsure. <laughs> Basically, the story follows a group of people who is being held hostage at a robbery by this robber. And it's about like all of these people, I think. Uh, it says each of them carries a lifetime of grievances, hurts, secrets, and passions that are ready to boil over. None of them is entirely who they appear to be, and all of them, the bank robber included, desperately crave some sort of rescue. As the authorities and media surround the premises, the reluctant allies will reveal surprising truths about themselves and set in motion a chain of events so unexpected that even they can hardly explain what happens next. So it sounds like a situation that I would be really interested in reading, like a bank robbery. It sounds, you know, high stakes, action packed, but it also has all of these elements of like a contemporary fiction of like a bunch of drama with all of these people and their issues and I like that too. So it could be five stars. I'm really hoping that it's five stars. The next one that I think is going to be five stars is Comfort Me With Apples by Catherine M. Valent. This one is so short and that's one of the reasons that I think I'm going to love it. Not because I'll be through it quickly, but because the story has to have a lot happen in such a short time. So I think it's gonna be a little bit unhinged. <laughs> And I love that. And this one's, this one says, Sophia was made for him, her perfect husband. She can feel it in her bones. He is perfect. Their home together in Arcadia Gardens is perfect. Everything is perfect. It's just that he's away so much, so often. He works so hard, she misses him and he misses her. He says he does, so it must be true. He is the perfect husband and everything is perfect. But sometimes Sophia wonders about things, strange things, dark things. The look on her husband's face when he comes back from a long business trip. The questions he will not answer. The locked basement she is never allowed to enter. And whenever she asks the neighbors, they can't quite meet her gaze. But everything is perfect, isn't it? I think that this is going to be like unhinged and thrilling. I think it's going to be really, really good. And I, I think that it's gonna be five stars. <laughs> I just made another change. <laughs> I just changed the last two books that I wanna talk about. I originally was going to talk about eight books, but I have shortened it down to six. And I think that I am content with these last two. Um, this, this is a mess, <laughs> but let's talk about them before I change my mind. So before I change my mind, I added The Sword of Kaigan by M.L. Wang onto this list of books I think are gonna be five stars. <laughs> so The Sword of Kaigan is a standalone fantasy. Um, those are kind of hard to come by. And I realized that I didn't have a fantasy on this list. So I needed, I needed to put a fantasy on this list. And I have heard nothing but phenomenal things about this story. So that means that it has to be five stars for me too, right? <laughs> That's the only reasonable way of thinking. <laughs> But it does say on the back, it says, The Poppy War's darkness meets the last airbender's elemental magic. I mean, The Poppy War is one of my favorite series. And The Last Airbender's elemental magic, like, that, that sounds great. Sign me up. In the story, it says, On a mountainside at the edge of the Kaiganese Empire live the most powerful fighters in the world warriors capable of raising the sea and wielding blades of ice. For centuries, the fighters of the Kusanagi Peninsula have held the empire's enemies at bay, earning their treacherous spit of land the name the Sword of Kaigen. Born into Kusanagi's legendary Matusta family, 14-year-old Mamoru has always known his purpose, to master his family's fighting techniques and defend his homeland. But when an outsider arrives and pulls back the curtain on Kaigen's alleged age of peace, Mamoru realizes that he might not have much time before he has to become the fighter he was bred to be. Even worse, the empire he was born to defend might might stand on a foundation of lies. Misaki told herself that she left the passions of her youth behind when she married into the Matusta ho house. Determined to be a good housewife and mother, she hid away her sword along with everything from her days as a fighter in a faraway country. But with her son asking questions about the outside world, the threat of invasion looming on the horizon, and her frigid husband grating on her nerves, Misaki finds the fighter in her clawing its way back to the surface. When the winds of war reach their peninsula, will the Matusta family have the strength to defend their empire, or will they tear each other apart before the true enemies ever reach their shores? Again, I've heard nothing but great things about this story. I know that it like tears everyone apart who reads it because it's a very emotional book. So this one, I think that it's going to be five stars kind of off of what everyone's saying about it, but also it does have a lot of elements that I really like in a story. I really do love a standalone fantasy. And if it's being compared to the Poppy War, then I have high hopes for it. 
The last book that I want to talk about that I think is going to be five stars is Sorrowland by River Solomon. I think that this book sounds great. Great. <laughs> oh my god, wait, this one is about a strict like religious compound cult as well. Obviously I have a theme here. <laughs> I could regret putting two similar books on this list because one might be better than the other. Oh no. <laughs> it's too late now. Sorrowland by River Solomon. Ready? <laughs> this one is about Vern. She is seven months pregnant and desperate to escape the strict religious compound where she was raised. She flees for shelter of the woods. There she gives birth to twins and plans to raise them far from the influence of the outside world. But even in the forest, Vern is a hunted woman. Forced to fight back against the community that refuses to let her go, she unleashes incredible brutality far beyond what a person should be capable of. Her body racked by inexplicable and uncanny changes. To understand her metamorphosis and to protect her small family, Vern has to face the past and more troublingly, the future outside of the woods. Finding the truth will mean uncovering not only the secrets of the compound she fled, but also the violent history of America that produced it. It says that this is a genre-bending work of gothic fiction. Monsters aren't just individuals, but entire nations. And I genuinely like, I, I think that this book has a very high possibility of being five stars for me. The fact that it was described as gothic fiction. Like I live for the atmospheric, really detailed descriptions that really make you as a reader feel what's going on. So if that book does this for me, it has a great shot of being five stars. That in addition to just how, how it was described, like she's escaped a cult, obviously one, but two, her unleashing incredible brutality far beyond what a person should be capable of, her body's going through uncanny changes, like all of these things sound like very feral while also tackling some like hard hitting topics of like the real world. So I think it, I think it could be five stars. Okay guys. <laughs> These are the books that I'm putting on my five star predictions list. We have Yoke, History of Wild Places, Anxious People, Comfort Me with Apples, Sword of Kaigen, and Sorrowland. This is a very different stack than what my last one was. I think that this is like night and day. This is more, I don't know, there's like three of these six are just like kind of like strange, weird books. And then other three are like a fantasy and then two like normal books, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so I, I'm very, very much looking forward to seeing if I'm correct because all of these books sound phenomenal and I hope that they really are five stars. We'll see. <laughs> and that's all that I have for you today. So thank you so much for watching and being here and hanging out with me for a little bit. If you are still watching, then leave the praying hands emoji because I will need your thoughts and prayers. <laughs> and while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. I always appreciate your support. And of course, be kind to one another and happy reading. Bye.